This paddle snapped, and we're going to fix it. Stick around to the end and see how we get a pretty decent finish without compounding or polishing. For most paddle repairs, getting things straight and aligned is usually the toughest part. This blade snapped fairly clean, so it's best to reattach it just as it broke. This helps maintain the original feather angle and overall length with minimal effort. The shaft is mostly intact, so we just need to align the broken blade to match the opposite side. These bar clamps provide a stable and even platform to support reassembly. By leveling the good side and taking some measurements, I can replicate this alignment for the broken blade. It's always good to do a dry fit before committing to the epoxy. It's cool in the shop, and epoxy is much easier to work with if it's warmed up a bit. This microwave works great. I add a little bit of chopped fiberglass to give the resin some strength. This is fume silica. You don't want to inhale this, so wear a mask. I try and move slowly as not to make it angry, but a small amount always ends up floating around somewhere. This is weird stuff, and like I said, you don't want to breathe it. Fume silica also strengthens the resin, but I'm using it mostly as a thickener. I fill each side of the brake with thickened epoxy. This ensures a void-free joint. Excess filler will squeeze out and I can wipe it off. With the paddle shaft secured in the bar clamps and parallel to the table edge, I can measure off the table to ensure proper alignment of the reattached blade. Once the epoxy has fully cured, the joint is filed and sanded smooth. I want to make sure the joint is smooth and flat, since I'll be putting carbon reinforcement over. Any unevenness in this joint will print through and be visible in the repair. I'm also scuff sanding the surrounding area to ensure we get a good bond with the epoxy resin. This repair is a perfect application for woven carbon sleeve. I can cut it to length and slip it over the joint. I wet out one layer at a time. I want to ensure each layer of carbon is fully saturated before moving on to the next. This will make the repair a bit more resin rich than I'd prefer, but it keeps things simple. Adding peel ply helps pull some excess resin from the repair, and it leaves a great surface finish for the next steps. Once this cures, I can remove the peel ply and the surface is ready for a fill coat. The texture left by the peel ply means sanding is not required before the fill, but I will smooth and blend the edges of the repair. This masking tape gives me a visual aid as well as some protection for areas I don't want to scuff. I'm blending the edges of the reinforcement with the surrounding area. I don't want to sand away the carbon too much over the joint as this will weaken the repair. I applied an epoxy fill coat and forgot to record it. It's pretty simple and I add another one. You'll get to see that soon, so don't worry. A fill coat gives me something to sand to flatten the surface. It fills the low spots and the high spots are sanded down, leaving the carbon fibers intact. You can see we still have some low areas indicated by shiny spots. These are addressed with another epoxy fill coat. And here it is. A fill coat is just clear epoxy resin, the same I use to laminate the carbon fiber sleeve. I brush it on and walk away. It's best to leave it alone and allow it to level out. This might seem insane, but I'm pretty comfortable with this rotary sander. The edges of the fill coat need to be feathered, and this makes quick work of it. I refine it a bit more with the random orbital sander, which is a more civilized power tool. I then sand the rest of it smooth, producing the final flat surface. Two fill coats were more than enough, and now it's time for wet sanding. Epoxy is tough on sandpaper, and these finer grits can gum up quickly. Wet sanding makes this process much easier. This is a water-based cross-linked polyurethane. It doesn't give a class A polished finish, but I think it's more than good enough for most projects. and certainly good enough for a whitewater paddle that would be back hitting the rocks in no time. 
But I do like the repair to look nice, and this stuff does a great job at that. Two coats is usually sufficient. There are a lot of options for clear coats, but I like this because it's water-based, it has no solvents, is easy to brush on, and it settles out nice into a smooth, brushstroke-free finish. I like it because it's simple and effective. This is the second and final coat. Once this dries, all there is to do is peel the tape. There will be a small visible tape line at the edge of the top coat, and I would avoid this finish method if that were a problem. But for this paddle, it should be fine. And there you have it. Not perfect, but I'd say it's not bad at all. Check this one out.